So, guys, if you look at this definition of comics that we talked about earlier, it says comics, plural in form, used with a singular verb, juxtaposed, pictorial, and other images in deliberate sequence, intended to convey information and or produce an aesthetic response in the viewer. That's a very long, long-winded definition. We talked about earlier, the really only definition that we're going to need is juxtaposed pictorial images. So for all the doors that our definition opens, there is one in which it closes. Single panels like this one are often lumped in with comics, yet there's no such thing as a sequence of one. So we have this guy down here just saying, Mommy, why ain't I juxtaposed? So we can't have a, a, a comic. Comic in the lexicon of what we're talking about here, there's no singular comic. So if we're talking about juxtaposed images one after the other, this doesn't really fit our definition, just one static image by itself. Such single panels might be classified as comic art, in the sense that they derive part of their visual vocabulary from comics, but I say there are no more comics than this still of Humphrey Bogart, Bogart is film. Hi, Bogey. They are cartoons, as am I, and there's a long-standing relationship between comics and cartoons, so they're different. He's making the case that cartoons and comics, which is this whole thing, are different, but they are not the same thing. One is an approach to picture making, a style if you like, while the other is a medium which often employs that approach. More on this later. This same single panel might also be labeled comics where it's juxtaposition of words and, and pictures. A great majority of modern comics do feature words and pictures in combination and it's a subject worthy of study, but when used as a definition for comics I found it to be a little too restrictive for my taste. Of course, if anyone wants to write a book taking the opposite view, you can bet I'll be the first in line to buy a copy. If comics' spectacularly varied past is any indication, comics' future will be visual virtually impossible to predict using the standards of present. But our definition can offer us some clues. And this time, the secret is not in what the definition says, but in what it doesn't say. For example, our definition says nothing about superheroes or funny animals, nothing about fantasy, science, fiction, or reader age. No genres are listed in our definition, no types of subject matters, no styles of prose or poetry. Nothing is said about paper and ink, no printing process is mentioned, printing itself isn't even specified. Nothing is said about technical pens or Bristol board or Windsor and Newton finest Sable Series 7 number 2 brushes. No materials are ruled out by our definition. No tools are prohibited. So all this stuff, guys, can be comics okay? and, and more, which is what we'll talk about. But don't be thrown off. Comics is not just like Batman and it's not just Mouse, which is what we've been reading. And it's not just um, Marjane Satrapi's Persepolis. It's not just those static examples. It can be a huge varied number of things. There is no mention of black lines and flat colored ink, no calls for exaggerated anatomy for representational art of any kind, no schools of art are banished by our definition, no philosophies, no movements, no ways of seeing are out of bounds. So take a look at all these images here, all are in the lexicon of comics right here, especially this which is what was mentioned a little bit earlier. Those of you who make comics for a living or would like to someday probably know that keeping up with all the advances in today's comics is a full-time job. There are so many comics in print today that it would take an army of readers to study them all. However, much, excuse me, much, much we may try to understand the world of comics around us, a part of that world will always lie in shadow, a mystery. I'll do my best in the following chapters to shed light on that unseen side, but as we focus on the world of comics as it is, it should be kept in mind that all times, that at all times, that this world is only one of many possible worlds. Our attempts to define comics are an ongoing process which won't end anytime soon. A new generation will no doubt reject whatever this one finally decides to accept and try, to, try once more to reinvent comics, and so they should. Here's to the great debate. Okay, I'm not going to go on to chapter two just now. I want you to rewind this video a little bit and really kind of get a feel for 
what I'm talking about here and what Scott McCloud is talking about. He says that comics are not just static images. So it's not just this by itself, these, this image of two faces. It's not this piece of artwork here by itself. And we can't really define it by saying, oh, it's, it's a picture that we draw. It is something that we spray paint on a wall, a series of pictures of graffiti. So it really can't be defined by this, which really makes it sort of cool for us because it's sort of um, exponentially, we can kind of uh, expand out and make it what we want it to be. As long as we follow this very simple definition, it is sequential art. One image next to another image or series of a couple and it presents to us a story, so sequential art. If you need to rewind any part of this video to get this information again, by all means. And until next time, see you around.